Hello and welcome. Thanks very much for joining us. So far you've had only budget all day on every channel, every minute, every hour. So you've heard politicians, you've heard businessmen, you've heard accountants, you've heard finance, you've heard, heard lawyers. But you've not heard this. Get ready for the biggest explosive and why are you smiling? <laughs> In-depth analysis of this budget by economists. Don't switch off. These are serious economists, the best in this country. And we really want to look at what really is in this budget. Go in depth and the budget and beyond. And Lionel, you want to look before the budget also. Go back how many years? Don't ask. Don't ask. <laughs> okay. Oops, very worrying. No, please don't get worried. Uh, everybody will explain what they mean and what they think very clearly and in simple terms. But this is perhaps the only one place, one show, where you'll get a whole lot of top economists together understanding what this budget means for our economy. So we look at the budget and beyond in depth, and we look at 10 points. Uh, just let's look at, say, point number one. In point number one, what's the link between the economic survey and the budget? Uh, that's the key question. The economic survey was a really detailed document, had a lot of new things to say and uh, slightly beyond economics as well and they proudly said that, not just traditional economics and some said no, that was a little too far beyond economics. But they did focus on certain key issues. Arvind, did the budget sync with the economic survey or were they, they uh, still to catch up? Like most. Politicians have to catch up with us economists, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, you made me very uncomfortable when you talked about 35 <laughs> years <laughs> before. No, he's but 35 anyway. years old. So, <laughs> uh, so, so the qu question, you know, uh, people used to keep ask, looking for hints about uh, yeah. things in the budget which would make money. Uh, that's not what I mean by the link. <laughs> what I was uh, intrigued by was, uh, is there an approach or a view? Because if you recall, uh, right. in the beginning of the last term of this government, uh, people expected huge reforms. Some people did, I did not. Right. And they were terribly disappointed. So the question was, will this time around, will they go back to some of the reforms, issues, etc., uh, which people like you and me have been talking about for uh, several decades? Me for, no? yes. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> no, when you say, um, People expected huge reforms and they were disappointed because it was more incremental and there was a different approach. You look at the approach or what? Well, it was definitely more incremental. Project based uh, sort of thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, right. But uh, let's, I mean, that's yes. just the background. Let's right. come to the current. Otherwise, yes. you won't yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what I, uh, I mean, what I was intrigued by is that, uh, and, and one was concerned about what would be in the budget. And in that sense, the economic survey did lay out a kind of hint yes. of that there may be a change Changes. in approach towards what uh, somebody like me or right. uh, you might like or, and right. even Ila. And, even and, Ila. And uh, well, basically, well, I know her, that's <laughs> why I'm saying, otherwise I wouldn't say. Uh, so, uh, so, so what was that? So the question was uh, when uh, one of the things which PM had already indicated, uh, a growth target or an economy target. Now, many people uh, are concerned, uh, you know, uh, I have a uh, approach, ke what is the philosophy or view or approach Quite of right. the government, rather yeah. than uh, a lot of people have heard nitpicking, you can't attain it and all. Mm. I look at it more as a objective which will then help to define reform right. and the reform approach, right. etc. And mm. there was a hint of that in the economic survey. So your bottom line answer is yes, uh, there were certain things indicated in the survey in that direction. That in other words, you're saying the survey had a slight change of thinking. It looked yeah. more at terms of reform rather than projects right. so, and individual so money making. That's right. So two examples I can give you. Uh, one was this uh, review of the Rajasthan experience. I'm not talking about the quality of the research. The labor reforms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there was this uh, uh, on Rajasthan yes. labor reform experience. Right. You know, in a simple way showed yeah. that after the reform, the number of companies, the jobs went up compared to all India. Right. Now, you can always question the quality of the research, but that indicated yeah. that there was some direction of thinking in that. And the second one 
वो स्मॉल एंड मीडियम आई मीन वी बीन टॉकिंग अबाउट स्मॉल एंड मीडियम इंडस्ट्रीज अगेन गिविंग अवे आर एज फॉर आई डोट नो हाउ मेनी डेकेड यू नो एंड नथिंग चेंजेस सो व्हाट वाज यूजफुल दैट ऑफ कोर्स रघु हैड वर्क्ड ऑन एसएमईज एंड गेव समथिंग व्हेन ही वाज हियर बट यू कैन टॉक अबाउट हां सॉरी बट दिस एग्जांपल ऑफ कंपेयरिंग विद मेक्सिको एंड द यूएस and making the basic point that you shouldn't protect uh, uh, you know mature uh, smes you want to uh, do the uh, new ones yeah, and their first 14 years of growth focus on infants that and make sure they the grow growth, and they, that produces gdp and jobs both right. so you know the way i read that is not that it's a fantastic piece of research or something but an right. indication that maybe they were depending on real research real information right uh, uh, and, and they were and looking at a bigger yeah. picture and i basically uh, i mean we can discuss the detail later i yes. basically found the part a of the speech was consistent with with that this with kind the of uh, uh, and we'll turn. go into each detail yeah. later i do want to of uh, the 10 points bring in the second point right now and then we'll go into both of them in some detail point number 2 uh, we just want to look at what was the state of the economy or what was the state of finances uh the fiscal situation before the budget uh nainan what did nirmala sitaraman inherit was it a tough situation or did she inherit did she have a lot of room to play with or was it quite uh, a difficult task uh pranay she had a tough uh, ask in on both counts on the budget itself and on the economy <laughs> on the economy the January March quarter saw the lowest quarterly growth rate in right 5 years plus right uh, certainly in the life of the first modi government because the so, economic say was troughing out but there's no evidence of why but yeah, anyway so but, uh, i mean she, when she came it in, was the that, lowest that's yes. what she yes. got so she had to get the economy to get up and moving right. so that is one challenge and the second challenge was a slightly unexpected one that the interim budget in february had put uh, forward a set of revenue targets for this year based on the what they call the revised estimates for last year so you if you have a certain tax base you do a certain amount of addition and you say that's a target for new right, year right so the base last year's base uh, uh, more or less collapsed oh. um when the controller general of accounts gave his report just when the new government took charge and the drop in the tax revenue was about uh, 0.9% of gdp so if nothing had been everything else been left unchanged what was 3.4% of gdp as a deficit would have become 4.3% so that's the issue she had to cope with as soon as she came into office so these were two tough Very challenges that tough uh, that she faced. handover was pretty tough yeah right and um, based on that because it meant that if your base is dropped yeah. then your revenue targets that were set are not completely unrealistic because you can't get 30% revenue growth in one year so you have to lower the new year's targets which is what she's done in right. the budget yes yes or you do what arvind and i used to do just increase the growth rate <laughs> revenue percentages growth they're more honest than you these days oh <laughs> the world has changed i must say Nina do you feel that like, uh, sorry just a <laughs> anecdote when I, uh, when we went to meet uh, FM she looked very worried i think this mm. tension was on her head i mean from her face uh, yeah defense was nothing compared to this <laughs> <laughs> uh i did say that i thought the speech was actually a very well presented speech uh we'll go into what we're going to do now is don't look at the form and the presentation but actually. the content it was very well very yes. uh, convincingly and passionately done uh, one of the best speeches but whether the content match the form uh we shall that's what we're going to look into i'm sorry can i ask something nine yeah. and the revenue receipts as shown in the january budget february budget february budget this year are the same as the one so use the use goal budget has exactly the same revenue receipts now no. when was the uh, cag report because there one she has not she has mm. not put into the budget the numbers issued by the cga mm -hmm. she stayed with the interim budget revised figures the what they call the provisional actuals are there in the economic survey yeah the uh, the provisional actuals uh, which came out in may are there in the economic survey yeah. <coughs> but in the budget 
she has not taken note of that. Fine, but she has seen right. the 5.8 <coughs> figure much afterwards, and that is taken. No, the, she, the kno she knows the, num the CGA's numbers yeah. when she's preparing the budget. That's and why she's lowered the revenue targets. Yeah, but I understand. But the fiscal deficit was 3.4% for Piyush Goel, yes. who didn't know the bad news. And after That's the right. bad news, 3.3. That's why I said if the situation had been left untouched, the deficit yes. would have been 4.3. Yeah, yeah. So she's yeah. had to bring yeah. it down from 4.3 to 3.3. You wanted to add something? No, I, uh, I think uh, what you are the one change, the substantive change is the increase in taxes, the tariffs, uh, uh, direct taxes, etc. So uh, if they had been over, revenues were, tax revenues were overestimated, there is new taxes being raised now, which will fill that gap. You quite Plus the non-tax revenue, revenue. How little the taxes are, they're only 9.3% being raised versus the revised estimates. Yeah, well. I mean, I don't know no, the number, I'm just saying no. that's what is different. Is it well, how the numbers yeah, are going to match is something right. we'll talk about at some time. Yes, yes. Um, whether they are really realistic yeah. and whether they're actually going to happen and whether... I mean, one of the issues about this $5 trillion economy in five years or six years, it can't be in real terms because five trillion... Uh, and the doubling in real terms means you have to grow at more than 12% a year. And his, the uh, economic survey only says 8%. So if it's nominal, it's meaningless because inflation will take care of a lot of things. But it's nice to have these kind of targets or is it a bit of... Uh, no, I, I don't think uh, it's that un unrealistic because what are you talking about? Instead of 7, which is what they've uh, forecast hmm. for next year, they're talking about 8 for a period of 5 years. Given that your inflation target is 4% and given that... Let's assume that there is no rupee uh, depreciation. No, but the then you are, you're simple pretty rule much of thumb, if you move to 8%, it will take you 9 years to double your income. Double, 9 years at 8%. To double in 5 years, you will need... You no, she's adding inflation of 12%. 12 12 oh, you're adding inflation. Yeah, she's adding yeah. So why are you get 10% inflation, inflation, you're fine. Yeah. No, you have an inflation target of 4%, yeah. plus minus 2, so, and, yes. you know, yeah. you've pretty much been... And, of course, in it's in range. dollar terms, so your rupee better not devalue so that, against the dollar. Yeah, if so the that's rupee what I said. carries on at the previous trend, you're in real trouble. No, but if you look at the U.S. target, inflation target of 2%, right. and the right. Indian inflation target of 4%, right. then one would say that maybe over a period of 10 years, you'll get a 2% depreciation. Right. Uh, but, you know, if you move with... Uh, opening up the capital account, which is a lot of what has <coughs> been done to attract foreign flows, you may not get that depreciation. And if you don't get it, then this number, it's within a realistic range. I mean, we're not talking about global but shocks. Don't you and feel that they should have been clear? We don't mean your real incomes are going to double. Our real income is not going to go to five trillion. It's in income plus inflation. Do you feel they should have been a little clearer about that? This was political signaling. I think in and of itself, it's not a bad thing to do for a government that has just come into power. Right. And uh, it, it isn't, uh, as Ila just said, it isn't an impossible target. Mm -hmm. So I think it's all right. I, I, I think this is not one of the charges I would make on the government. Uh, you it, have it, lots it, of other <laughs> charges. <so we're laughs> no, no. <laughs> I didn't say that. I just said this was not one, one of, of the, the charges. charges. <laughs> well, Shamika, one of the um, uh, charges which they have said is this doubling of agricultural incomes by 2022, which is just crazy. I mean, you talk nominal, real, it can't happen because agriculture grows at 3%. It's very tough to change that, maybe 4%, one or two years, and averaging three. So this is not part, no, this is not in the same league. This is a little more realistic, would you say? You know, I think uh, uh, <laughs> you have to consider the finance ministry as the accounts department of a firm. To look for... Uh, it's like the accounts department of the government. Absolutely. Okay. And to look for every solution in the budget, when you know that there's a new government and there is a 100-day program that is being worked out, uh, I think that is one of the reasons why we're constantly coming up against these gaps. But on the agriculture, I'd like to basically make one point, yeah. uh, which is that, you know, perhaps the, the best way, the most sustainable way to double farmer income is to halve the farmer population. And which takes us back to, uh, you know, pushing forth with the manufacturing, uh, with the SMEs, and, and which has been a great thrust uh, within this budget. But that takes a long time to halve the yeah. agriculture. I mean, we're talking about a few decades. I think, Pranav, see, mm. part of the problem is that while the vision is mostly macro in nature, you're 
economic strategy. Yeah. So far, we're frankly only talking uh, national income accounts. Yes. Uh, the economics will come in when you begin to talk about the micro strategies which will help you achieve those targets. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that will mean that, you know, setting a target of perhaps doubling uh, tourists in India, uh, doubling the apparel exports, doubling electronics. I mean, we'll just have to come up with a series. And, and I think that's exactly what individuals Yeah, we were just looking at the on. figures. Venice has three times the number of tourists that India has. The whole of India has each year. Venice, right, one right, city. Right, yeah. And you know, we've been talking well, about... Well, Venice is at least historic and it's been <laughs> part of the OECD, but you should consider Thailand. <laughs> yeah. And Thailand is a recent... Yeah. And yeah. Well, many Thailand. others. Look at but United Arab Emirates, yeah. Singapore, Hong Kong, they're all about 15 million tourists that yeah. more than their population. Yeah. And we have 15 million, half of whom are Indians coming back. So not spending big bucks here. Right. Well, Singapore doesn't have that many Singaporeans coming back on a holiday. No, I think on the tourism, the reason we keep referring to tourism is also because it's such a job generating yeah. uh, right. sector. But you have to realize that right now domestic tourism is quite expensive. In fact, I was in Leh 10 days back and they tell you that, you know, one of the reasons our families don't visit is because going to Singapore is cheaper. Bangkok no, it's even cheaper. Yeah. So in effect, we are actually importing tourism, right? Yes. And you know, that's um, the whole idea. In, 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 in fact, I think that also speaks to a broader challenge that the economy faces, right? I had exactly the same, uh, it's summer holidays in June, right? So we've all probably gone through the same thing. It was more expensive to fly out of India than to fly anywhere in India, and it was more... It's it, cheaper to fly cheaper. out of India yeah, yeah, than sorry, it, more yeah, expensive yeah. within and India. And it was much cheaper to find perfectly decent accommodation outside, you know, in Southeast Asia than it is in India. But that's a, even that's a critical point, that we have consistently been thinking of growing an economy uh, that uh, is not in fact catering to the needs of the bulk of the population of India. I mean, just th think right. about it. The, the first thing that you do when you hit your 40s is thinking about your big savings. And now, the big saving that I'm going to make is for my children's education, in all probability, regardless of uh, uh, you know, all, all the claims being made about where the future of higher education is going to go, in the, in, in, you know, given, the, given the ecosystem, that expenditure is not happening inside India. So the challenge, I think, even when we're thinking about MSMEs, is how do you create a manufacturing industry that MSMEs, is able to manufacture? We are talking to viewers. Sorry about uh, no acronym. So, so, so when it comes, <laughs> to, when it comes to the challenge of, of strengthening the Indian manufacturing sector, small, I think the, yeah. the small, uh, sm uh, small and medium enterprises. I think we also need to consider how is it that we encourage Indian manufacturers to innovate for Indian goods that Indians, the average Indian, consumes. That's a challenge that we and have. That's an interesting today. point because, Nainan, we talk about tourism and foreign tourism and, uh, you know, we see the tourists and, and we are looking for them and they're not coming. But I was in Goa and uh, with a shack and I know the shack person and I said, you know, you pay taxi drivers to bring people. He said, yeah, everybody does that. We pay taxi drivers to come. So I said, how much do you pay? He said, for a Russian, per Russian, we pay 250 rupees. As what? To bring him here and they make it up because he drinks so much vodka. Then he said for an Indian we pay, we pay 150 rupees. And then for a Britisher we pay 50 rupees only. <laughs> <laughs> because why? Britishers don't spend. So why are we looking at foreign tourists when our tourists are three times valuable just by a uh, very important Market yardstick yeah. of a shack paying people. You know they check what's your nationality? Okay, here's only 50 bucks if you're British, to the taxi driver. Really? Because the Englishmen sit with one bottle of beer and sit all evening. The Russians have two bottles of vodka. And Indians in between, they mix the two. So why do we look only at foreigners? We've got a lot of purchasing power here, or not? No, it's the largest industry in the world about petroleum, tourism. Right. It's the largest generator of jobs in yeah. the world. Yeah. You know, but what are we doing? I mean, yeah. great to have domestic tourism, but you know, I mean, France has 80 million tourists, foreign tourists. No, no, but let's be real. Uh, what is the experience what? that you can offer? Yeah, but we. And in what numbers can you offer? Shouldn't we invest in yeah. that instead That's of six point. places? So we're investing six yeah. places. Infrastructure. More places. Yeah. Uh, in so I think you, you have to do the hard work to get the numbers. It's not right. that, yeah. you know, you just can get it just like that. Yeah. yeah. So I think domestic uh, economy is, of course, something we've been falling back on for some time now. Yeah. But again, again, Purely from a national income accounting perspective, <laughs> savings have stagnated and yeah. we're trying to raise investments. So one missing factor that we have sort of given up on is exports. And, and talking about external uh, tourists is therefore it, it, it's a form of yeah. exports that has to be...
So one, a lot of people have said, I mean, in, during the discussions today, that there's no real big idea in this, in this budget. I think to some extent what Arvind is saying is correct. It indicates an approach which is not just micro and it seems to be a change in thinking, but that we have to wait a couple of more. But uh, one, if you look at the third point, I think it's a, a point I'd like to talk to you about, Hila. Is this a big idea? And if you could explain its ramifications. Is this a new idea, borrowing from overseas, which is uh, quite heavily focused on and discussed in this budget? See, the, uh, as Shamika just said, the savings rate has not just stagnated, it's actually fallen. fallen yeah. As a share of GDP, savings have gone down. Household savings have moved from around 22% to 17.5%. That's shocking. So, 5%. with the decline in savings rate, if you want to push up investment... So, we should make it clear that investment and savings go hand in hand so if your savings go down your investment goes down yeah unless you can compensate for it by importing capital from abroad right. capital inflows whether yeah. it's debt whether it's equity so you know you'll see in this budget there are policies that encourage foreign portfolio flows earlier we used to say oh that's hot money and we don't want it and stuff like that but very clearly foreign portfolio i'm just trying to simplify is people buying shares on the stock exchange moving in and out yeah. that's why it's hot that's why it's hot it's buying indian equity and people right. would say that that's not the minute good. they can get out as they well. can get out very easily debt was actually considered even more dangerous because people would say that oh you'll be really indebted and then you know our history of 91 where yes. india went with a begging bowl made us very averse to foreign debt now what you have in this budget speech today is that uh, the finance minister says that uh, we will issue uh, dollar denominated, foreign currency denominated sovereign debt. Thank you. That's the big thing because what it will do is it will be it will act as a benchmark. The risk free rate will act as a benchmark and allow more corporates to borrow from abroad. Risk free rate. So it's because government the borrowing. sovereign debt, what people buy it at, gives you the baseline of a risk free lending to India, and then individual companies can point to that and say okay we can right. be a little bit above that but that's a a, a yardstick is that absolutely, right absolutely absolutely okay, which we don't have now which we don't have now which we haven't done so sbi used to borrow but uh, you know the millennium india resurgent india bonds but it wasn't really government going out let's say on the london money market and borrowing which many other countries do so how much money do you think will come in like this i mean any See, what you what you what you we've been comfortable with is a current account deficit which gets financed by foreign capital flows of about two and a half percent when it starts going to three we become uncomfortable but i guess in today's scenario if you're thinking that exports are not really picking up as you know shamika was pointing out then you might have a larger current account deficit you want your yes. e domestic e economy are really in bad shape, yeah. and you are wanting your domestic economy to pick up you want investment Sports, yeah. so then you might be more comfortable with three four percent of foreign capital flows I'm not saying you will be I'm sure uh, Dr. Virmani will not no, agree I will, with uh, you. I just want to ask you sorry no, and the issue is also uh, apart from uh, over and above what Ila just said that the government will save money by borrowing overseas because it's cheaper. Interest rates will be lower. Most of the uh, international market is operating today at less than 1%. And here we are close to 7%. Right. Government borrowing, 10-year right. money. Uh, so even if India gets to borrow at 2.5-3%, even if you take uh, currency risk cover at about 3%, you're still borrowing at more than 1% less than you would in the domestic market. Right. Plus, since domestic savings have fallen, government borrowing is seen as keeping interest rates high, so private business can't borrow, it's too expensive. Right. So if the government borrows outside, then it doesn't push up interest rates, domestic interest rates fall, private investment can move in. So, so what sort of economists works. call yeah. no crowding out. Yeah. When they borrow internally, you crowd out fine. Uh, so you, you bring private. the interest rates down, which is what you want to do, and the government saves money on the interest cost of its borrowing. So this is a big positive in this budget, is it? Yes. Which is a major it is change. done within safe limits. Now that's the point. I wanted I, to ask I, you, is it a slippery path? You allow yeah. a government to so start borrowing. I want to make a couple of points, hmm. starting with the savings investment. You know, uh, unfortunately, I've done two papers on saving okay. investment and growth recently. So I can't help myself from boring you. 
<laughs> if you look at the uh, no worry we're all doing the same thing <laughs> <laughs> so if you look at the investment and saving balances which i have done very carefully it's basically household investment in what we call structures which has gone down over the last 10 years okay it is not corporate savings it is not public savings they've all increased so basically the what they used to do was they invest directly in housing and and industrial structures and commercial that has gone down and there's a whole this black money issue and all connected with it right if you look at the financial savings the gross savings has gone up but they are more borrowing more that has gone up even faster and therefore the net has gone down it's very important to understand this at because you get wrong uh, solution i can't even ask you a question because i'm not exactly <laughs> but as all nylon sort of what is drifting up and i just want to come back to this big yeah, idea okay of, next to the yeah, next one yeah that that's just the basic yeah, fact yeah understood understood the reason why i'm saying saying it is because it's very important because you get wrong policy recommendation if you yeah, don't if you don't look, look at, at the, the data fact. properly that's all. correct that's correct, all i'm correct. going to illustrate yes, to not make some very no, no, point no no that's fine now as far as borrowing from abroad is concerned in the days before frbm i have uh, written on file 10 times not to permit this why not because, to permit this yes my fear was that it make it easy is cheaper is a temptation to spend more and more okay ah. now that we have frbm i would tone down my think and maybe go along with ila because this benchmark point uh, she and uh, she has been making for some time even before you join so you're that, the I'm so the you you are the one who calls so what, what is the result <laughs> what is the result uh, the result will not be a larger inflow of capital it will be cheaper capital which is good so we will overall if you look at the national i'm sure balance, it won't be a larger inflow that no, is the if the frbm doesn't work and they uh, no, no, push they up their they've already uh, budgeted fiscal deficit then you're in trouble sorry <laughs> the total borrowings for the year already budgeted right so it's a question of how much of that you borrow abroad and how much you borrow domestically do they have a stock to their borrowings budget? you talk no borrowings on they the balance actually. sheet not <laughs> off the balance yeah, sheet yeah but the government can borrow cheap so you will yeah, save the risk premium that is the point i am making that will be the main effect which is good definitely it's a good thing but i don't think that will mean unless your fiscal deficit goes up it will not mean that uh, there'll be a huge capital so i'm not worried about the capital flow, uh, flow so the and government uh, borrowing too much to 5% or something but, but uh, uh, just for one second yeah. will a fiscal deficit mean anything unless you bring in the off balance sheet items this fiscal uh, balance sheet joke no, why are we indulging in these jokes absolutely <laughs> no. anyway, i want to just get back to this point yeah. about uh, the big idea in this yes. which is not commonly looked at it's not like health care for everybody insurance for everybody that it is graspable this is a big uh, idea which is a, is a major new thing in this mm. budget mm. so as nainan said okay you get you can do it at 2 or 3% but you better make sure that your currency exchange rate remains stable because otherwise you're going to be paying 7 maybe 10% back no you see the very reason that you're asking foreign capital inviting foreign capital right. making it easier for it to come in is so that as long as it keeps coming in your currency doesn't depreciate so that's the i mean the logic is to get it so that the consequence of that is that the currency doesn't depreciate so you feel that this currency will be more stable from now on i think this i think so unless there are there are big external shocks so they generally But, say do the opposite of what all economists say right <laughs> that's what they generally say <laughs> especially if they're bengali economists i'm not bengali well, you're, <laughs> you are in a that's fine we'll listen to what you're saying so you're saying it's an undilutedly good thing that the government is borrowing from abroad at low interest rates why didn't they do this earlier nine and caution caution so interest rates globally were not so low yeah but always i think the differential between india and abroad were quite high so just caution no but global interest rates have been low for some time yeah. so earlier they were you know not not where they are now right um and we we always been careful about uh, external liabilities good thing to be careful but doctor so i think this is like many emerging today. markets have yeah. gone doctor belly up one second one second many so emerging markets have gone belly up because they borrowed too much Brazil, Mexico, Russia, Turkey, yeah. Thailand. Borrow too Korea. much. Yeah, they They're borrow too much. They're going belly up. Then you get into trouble. So caution earlier. Are we throwing caution to the winds? So at the yeah, present level of sovereign borrowing, I don't see much. We are okay no. because we are very low. So right? You have to do. That's the point she made in her speech. Also. You have to do it within safe limits and not 
suddenly think this is free money or easy so, money. And we have so enough checks and balances? Well, that's a secondary point. The first point is the macro balances. Remember what was happening in 2013? Our current account went to 4%, fiscal deficit had risen. So yes, you are right to caution. That's precisely the other side of the coin of what I'm saying. It is okay and good and beneficial as long as your macro Within. balances are in control. If for some other reason they go out of whack, then you can be in trouble, which is what... Uh, no, so, yes. if I may, yes. one of the things to keep macro balances in check is the fiscal deficit number. Hi. So, I mean, we can all argue about how much is uh, off budget or not, but right. what you're, if what you're trying to do, exactly as Nainan said, is stick to a f fiscal deficit right. number, then you don't get into the fragile five and you don't get into the 2013 situation. Yeah, you don't get into... Into but uh, no, we didn't do it uh, earlier because we were cautious, so have we thrown caution to the wind? But no, let's uh, give it a try because what... Just we, one more thing. Never change a winning game, always <laughs> change a losing one. Mm -hmm. And we are not doing too well, so change it. The deficit is a lot, it's under control. I mean, if you consider yes. the last the decline over yeah. the last five years, you're yeah. in a much it's, better position. It's been on track and there's another thing that's happening, which is that many emerging economies, including India, are now able to borrow in their local currency. So we are able to go and float these masala bonds and people lend to us. So uh, the more the world becomes familiar, so they take the risk on exchange they take rate. the currency risk there. Right. So the more the world becomes comfortable, familiar with India, with the government borrowing, with then they look at what is the risk free rate for dollars, the better it is for us. And in a situation like in for masala bonds, we don't even have the currency risk. Right. So, Dora, you were great. saying something which... Uh, I was saying Dr. Rangarajan also believes we should not borrow, probably. He's from the older generation, he believes that we might... But I think More I risk averse. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So most of us believe that it's worth taking this risk. Right? No. Within yeah. limits. Yeah. See, I think it's diversification I mean, is a big yeah, long-term long game. Mm. But as, as Ilao has also said, you've got to make sure your uh, you know, macro balances remain in control. And that's where the FRBM comes in. No? That, that mm. there so is lot, there a lot of borrowing will happen externally, but it's crucial to keep it within limits. And we just have to keep a watch on that. And, uh, <coughs> and is it crucial it to see what we spend it on? That we borrow for capital? rather than day-to-day -day expenses? No, that's a separate that's issue. That's a separate debate, actually. That's a separate yeah. issue. Yeah. No, so that's you know probably true about all borrowing. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. So that's a separate debate. Okay, so let's for go macro on, balance, that's not really yeah. the issue. Right. Let's go on to another point, actually, uh, point number four out of the ten points, uh, and that's to do with uh, a signal from the economic survey, which only talked about investment, invest, forget everything else, don't look at sectors, don't look at anything, just get investment going and get your savings also going at the same time. So after this budget, Nainan, will investment get a boost? Will people, will this trigger that? To the extent that your financial sector, with all its troubles of bad assets and inadequate capital, to the extent that the financial sector has been a constraint on the real economy, this budget does something to address that issue. Financial uh, on the banks, it says they will put another 70,000 70, crores in as capital. On the NBFCs, it's giving a one-time uh, deal where you can pool some of these assets of the NBFCs and uh, get yes. some, you know, so. Uh, We're there, are to other, that there are other uh, financial sector instruments. They're trying to deepen the bond market. Uh, Ila is the expert on this. Um, so they're doing. They've done a fair amount in the budget to so try and deal with the financial sector's issues, which today are a drag on the real economy. So actually, since you've linked it, just let's go to point number five, and we link these two. This point number four was about investment. Number five was NBFCs non-banking financial co companies, corporations, and financial sector repair. How much was done and will that alone, and there has something be, uh, something be done, has it been enough, and will it be so linked and so uh, helpful that it will boost investment? Isn't that what you're saying, it's connected? Basically that, and they're so talking about a, looking at a new window for long-term financing of infrastructure. Uh, you know, they're looking at deepening the stock market with more public holdings. They're trying to bring, make it easier for foreigners to bring in money. Portfolio money has really stopped coming into India this, this year. Um, really? 
Yeah, on balance, it's very little. If uh, mm -hmm. direct investment continues to come in, but portfolio money is very marginal. Right. So they're trying to deepen the stock market, probably raise your share rate thing in the emerging markets index so that foreigners invest more <coughs> and so on. So th I think there is an attempt to deal with the financial sector because it's a constraint on the real economy and is acting as a constraint on investment. So uh, just to quickly list, uh, yeah. uh, uh, call, uh, one is the PPP is being revived. It had gone off for two, three years. You PPP, know. you know, no acronyms allowed. Uh, <laughs> Public-private public partnership, partnership yeah. one. Uh, the FDI liberalization FDI two. Chalo, foreign direct chalega, investment. Chalega. <laughs> nahi chalega. Chalega. Nahi chalega. Foreign, foreign direct, direct <laughs> investment. Correct. Foreign institutional investors and foreign pension now or whatever, talking. FBI. <laughs> now you're talking. Oh, gee. And four, of course, the financial. So the, the bond and all, maybe she can tell us about the some reforms yeah. in the financial yeah, sector which should also well. help. So, for example, I know it's going to sound very arcane, but if you will permit me, that... Uh, you're talking to arcane people. <laughs> <laughs> that... Uh, you know, the, for, for the bond market to develop and for infrastructure financing, what we've tried to do earlier was to get banks, you know, the banks that just go lend to infrastructure. That Why did you do this? <laughs> call, from the, <laughs> call from the government and give it to so and so. so By all governments, you don't have to worry. Yeah, it doesn't suit banks. It's, that's, you know, the maturity mismatches. We know what happened to banks because they lend so much to infrastructure in those boom years of six, Quite seven, right. eight. So instead of that what you really need is a bond market and I think that's what we're referring to here that you want these large infrastructure spending the government is not going to get uh, that money it's not going to come through tax revenue so you'll have to raise that money whether the government does it or whether the private sector does it what India lacks is a bond market and one of the things we've been doing so far is saying we have a separate corporate bond market and a separate government bond market and very often you'll hear the words corporate we need a development of the corporate bond market every other country every other bond market is a bond market you know exactly yes. not not a corporate bond market separately yeah. because again you know the benchmark comes from the risk free rate benchmark comes from the <laughs> thank you for <laughs> spelling it out yes. government bond market right there was something that she said today which i'm sure not too many people noticed and that was that the two depositories the depository means yeah. those who are holding the uh, information about who has the bond who holds the bond so whether you may hold the bond, I may hold the bond. The, de the two depositories of the government bond market and of the okay. corporate bond market. So the statutory general ledger and the uh, uh, NSBL, they, 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 would be, they would start talking to each other. I mean, this sounds like nothing big, but this is a big step in the right direction because that helps us move towards one bond market. Right. But Yamini, can I ask you, do you buy all this that the, the slowdown in the economy, the agrarian crisis, all these that we've been hearing about is only to do with the financial sector not being in good shape or is there something more? Does it mean just solving the financial sector and, they, and to credit the budget it has moved considerably in that direction or started moving in that direction. Once that done investment will come or is there more than that? If wishes were horses Yes, I mean absolutely you have to have some base conditions in place and I think that those steps have been taken. Uh, but you know, we certainly know when it comes to uh, 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 particularly uh, agriculture in India, there are a whole host of deep-seated, long-awaited reforms that need to be done to be able to actually make good of that investment. And I think that that's, uh, in some senses, the, the blueprint already exists. We've had uh, decades of conversations, uh, you know, and especially in the last few years in the context of the growing agrarian crisis uh, about what it is that, that, that needs to be done, the issue of subsidies, the issue of market reform and the APMC Act, uh, the issue of crop diversification. All of these, uh, these reforms are somewhat on the table. We know what we need to do. Uh, but this requires a, a, a willingness to say beyond I want to double farmers income I'm actually willing to do the hard stuff which may be difficult to sell but I'm willing to do it and then getting on with it I think this 
was, perhaps it still is, a unique opportunity to do that. You have a government with such a resounding mandate. I was disappointed to see that the approach to agriculture in the budget was very much peace, peaceful. And in fact, in fact, there are contradictory pulls and pressures. Right? So we are going to saying, come to agriculture okay. on one of okay. the other points. But broadly, you're saying that this is just a base condition, get your financial sector in. No, and it's essential in the context essential, yeah. of the slowing. It's a, it's a necessary condition. Yes. Yeah. But it doesn't mean they're automatically going to... Uh, Mukesh Bhutani, as a financial, as the only financial non-economist, but true economist here, uh, deep down, not these are not true economists. Uh, <laughs> tell us a bit about this uh, whole financial sector mess, because we know that ILFS got into real trouble, and that had a huge repercussion right down the line. You know what happened with Lehman Brothers? Everybody said it's going to be like that. Then America brought in TARP. I'm using TARP. You want to say what it was? <laughs> what it stands for? <laughs> no, anyway, no, they, to say it. <laughs> you know, I know it, but I, anchors ah, can't say this. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, they bailed out a lot of their uh, financial sector companies and spent a lot of money, and that helped a lot. Have we done some of that this time? Because the uh, RBI can oversee the NB NBFC, non-banking financial corporations. Yeah. Government is giving 70,000 crores as um, Big to the banks, at PSB, to banks, yeah. 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 banks. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah, how important is all uh, proposed in the RBI Act, uh, first to your comment on uh, why do we have the NBFC crisis? I think it's a combination of uh, events uh, without getting specifically into what happened at ILFS. I think uh, there, is, there are multiplicity of regulatory agencies which have an oversight on NBFC. Uh, is it the RBI? Uh, is it SEBI? Uh, is it RBI under the RBI Act or is it RBI under the Banking Regulation Act? I think, uh, you know, to me it seems that ILFS or a la ILFS kind of situations is resulting in within the government agencies fingers being pointed at each other. Uh, why didn't you check it and why wasn't your oversight better? Correct. I think uh, certainly it has uh, caused enormous pain uh, uh, you know as a result of uh, you know you, you have an NPA situation uh, which is not fully sorted out because of the impact NPA. of the IB's uh, non-performing assets. Uh, which is still a significant work in progress, uh, which has kind of uh, resulted in enormous credit squeeze. And the then NPAs the NPAs as a result of simple translation, <laughs> bad loans, <laughs> bad loans, <laughs> bad loans. <laughs> and then, <laughs> yeah, then you had the, the shadow banking, uh, which was at least from a consumer financing standpoint, uh, you know, oiling the you know machine very well. That has got choked as a result of ILFS crisis. So now you have a, you know, a sense of uh, conservativeness uh, at the lender's end. You have a sense of conservativeness at the regulator's end, particularly at the government's end. I just saw a couple of amendments that have been proposed to the RBI Act as a part of the budget proposals. And on one side, I fully understand the reason why it is done or why it is proposed. But I also see a overhang of regulatory controls. So just to give you a couple of examples. One second, before you go on to that, uh, I remember, remember Satyam and the terrible collapse of Satyam. But everybody felt this is one-off. Infosys and Wipro and TCS and nothing like that. Correct. So there was no fear that this was a general phenomenon. Yeah. With non-banking finance companies, is ILF seen as an isolated or is there a fear that they're all a bit worried? Well, if you look at uh, the fact that there is duality of control from a regulatory standpoint, it may not be an isolated case because whenever regulations in India, which is a not a rule but a principle-driven uh, interpretation of law, you always, you always have those smart accountants and lawyers pushing the envelope and taking the interpretation that they have taken. Uh, over a period Anika, of time... Do you think it's uh, only ILFS or it is a whole worry in the entire sector, a bit different to Satyam? No, it is not like Satyam. Not like Satyam. No. It's bigger than that. Absolutely. And while there are governance issues involved, like the Satyam analogy you're using, but this is, this is far more systematic. So the, the solving of the Satyam problem is one of the most wonderful things India has done in a Correct. long time. Correct. But it's a little easier than this because mm -hmm. you're saying it was isolated to Satyam. Is that right? Oh, yeah. 
yeah. satyam was an isolated case i mean case. you already yeah. know uh, it's out in the papers every day some other nbfcs that are yeah. defaulting, defaulting headed for trouble yes yes question marks yes See, so the, there is yeah. a larger systemic problem the, the difference yeah. is the big know, difference yeah. when you have producers of goods and services they are connected by things which are very apparent i buy from you yeah. i sell to him mm. in a financial system all this is under the table in a way yeah okay. and you have a package and, of and you all don't know where are the linkages so yeah. we have defined this something called systemically important financial institution so it gets the finance yeah. is more complicated that's the especially for economists yeah. i think it's also because you don't know who is good and who is bad there's so much non transparency correct so but you don't know which are the correct. sound uh, correct well, but in such yeah, in case yeah. terms yeah. this because yeah, it's all in below yeah because when you're buying and selling you know exactly what you're buying and who so is but but i see the impact of transparency because they moving to trying to make it a more transparent economy no i'm glad you gave an example of satyam what happened post satyam from a regulation standpoint if there was one law that saw a material repair which was the companies act of 2013 now most people commented uh, that the companies act 2013 most sick provisions were directed in a manner that every second company is a satyam so you had suddenly a 56 act getting translated into 2013 act which didn't look like a modern law the nbfc crisis today or the ilfs situation i think is going to impact a wider set of stakeholders so you are certainly going to see reforms on the assurance side i hope they are reforms and not regulations you're going to have other set of regulators you know breathing down the throat of rating agencies you're going to see risk management committee of nbfcs and banks playing a much more different role than the audit committees of non banking financial right. institutions okay, you will also is, see the uh, role of various hmm. regulatory agencies whether it's the uh, national financial reporting authority or the serious sports office playing different role in the context of an nbfc crisis okay i have yes. an analogy for you chrysler versus the tarp you were talking about right. see Cry chrysler was a bankrupt no no what does tarp stand for tarp is your thing no. i don't know <laughs> you tell me <laughs> <laughs> tarp so is the us response to the lehman I mean, crisis for a common person that that's yeah. the big difference yeah. exactly. huge difference okay <laughs> so let's move on to uh, point number 6 which is completely different from all of this uh, remember the the what any big welfare scheme for the poor uh, some people call these uh, freebies some people call them welfare schemes some people really genuinely help the poor uh, in the last i mean this government its most successful politically uh, scheme has been lpg gas for uh, basically women benefit to the most from that because women do all the cooking work everything in india men sit and play cards in villages <laughs> women smoke? do all the work smoke hook up and smoke yeah <laughs> but you didn't give a drink to back you could have also participated <laughs> <laughs> and they don't only smoke tobacco yeah so the welfare schemes in this budget were they enough was there anything new and said wow like i felt last budget the ayushman is it called the one uh, that was the one previous 2017 yeah 2017 uh, yeah. yeah sorry 2017 where to the actually a very mediocre budget but there one big idea that we will give health insurance to 500 million indians and they put in only 2000 crores and now they put only 6000 so again implementation of that has been a disappointment but anything new in this uh in the welfare scheme front see um Uh, no uh the short answer there was no grand announcement no new scheme of course the jal uh the pipe water supply uh, uh, jal mission uh, was reiterated in the budget uh, as was expected because that was one of the first things that they said and to be entirely honest i don't think that's necessarily a bad thing uh there is what uh, to reiterate uh, no uh, not to have a new announcement oh, okay. uh the over the last uh, few years uh, for a government that was initially considered to be far less welfare less than its predecessor uh this government has certainly moved in the direction of a lot more welfare large number of schemes have been announced and implemented uh, and you, you know there, there there seems to be at least political capital that has been generated from it but all of this requires money and uh where is the money coming from has been a critical issue and especially with ayushman bharat is a good example of a scheme where you know we've been waiting to see what's going to happen with the budget for a while and and there is no money to add to it now uh, also don't forget that in the interim budget 
about it, there was a very clear lock-in. PM Kisan was announced. Yeah. It is made very clear that income support uh, schemes are going to be the way forward for the government of India, primarily to deal with agricultural crises, but it was also paving the way forward for what could potentially be a transformation overall in, in the welfare architecture. And that's been extended. That was one of the first things the budget did. So there's no money to do anything else. And in fact, I think the challenge is going to come in the next few months in the context of uh, 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 the contracting of farm incomes and in the context of a potential uh, deficit of rainfall, you will likely get more demand for work in Nariga. And if that happens, right now there has been no change in the NREJ no budget. No increase in the uh, And even, uh, oh, you know, uh, despite increases in NREJ budget consistently for a few years, pending liabilities and wage payments have been an issue. In no. No, no, no. I, I should. <laughs> the, national rule, the, the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme. Manrega. Manrega. Uh, and and so, so I think, you know, there's going to be a lot of adjustments that will have to take place there and big challenges. So even with Swachh Bharat, we are moving from the uh, target of toilet construction and open defecation to solid liquid waste management. Uh, and given the nature of urbanization, this will have to be fecal sludge. These are all very expensive propositions. We have to figure out where to get the money from. And I think a much, much more carefully thought through. Uh, in fact, uh, there's a lot of opportunity, I believe, for reforming the way social sector schemes are financed in, uh, uh, by Government of India that could improve efficiency and movement of money. By the way, there's a large amount of money that sits in different bank accounts parked all over the country from centrally sponsored schemes that is not being spent owing to complications in our public finance management system. Right. One estimate says it's one lakh crore. All of this could uh, be, be reworked to make for a much more efficient, leaner, right. and more rational social right. uh, welfare. Does this connect very well with the exchange for the social sector scheme that the finance minister spoke about? So, you know, right now, it's, it, I don't even know what it really means in practical terms, so it's difficult it's to Possibly. It's welfare. not a welfare scheme. It's important to understand that it's for social enterprises. Yeah. Yeah, prices, yeah, right? which Absolutely. goes back to her point that if there is a lot of money in the system, for social yes, schemes, then all the more no, reason. I think these are no. different. No. Social enterprises are privately run firms no. which have a social objective and a financial objective. Welfare schemes are really government spending for. But I'd actually like, like to. Like the nine and trust, that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd actually. You've I'd got now your money. No, 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 I think no, it's no. important. The foundation to for <laughs> economic growth and welfare. <laughs> it's a Section 8 company. <laughs> oh, no, no, God. I think, I I'm surrounded by people. We, we are underplaying, I think, yes, uh, yes. this null se jal. Or har ghar jal. It's har ghar jal. Ice water. You know, the yes. literature to say, suggest that after industrial revolution, the next wave of productivity great gains happened because of pipe water that was right. brought into society. So I think uh, let's not, you know, it's a, it's a very major announcement and I, and I do hope in the implementation the zeal and the mission mode that uh, Swachh Bharat saw the road but, had. But and the second, the second actually on welfare, I, the SNG, the linking of the self-help groups uh, to Mudra and making available SSG. the self-help groups. I, I, you I did, did say it. Actually. I did. <laughs> so, you know, just availing finances yes. to women across the country. Yes. SSGs have been largely a southern or a western phenomenon in the country. Taking it to all the streets, I think these are fantastic moves. Yeah. Uh, if I may just add, I think that what we saw with the first budget of the first term of Modi, uh, the July budget, was a lot of schemes, maybe 20, 30 schemes that they had promised in their manifesto, where they put in 50 crores, 100 crores, 200 crores. It was almost like pilot projects. You know, that you start a lot of them, a few of them survived, not all of them survived, and perhaps the good ones survived, the ones that were well implemented, uh, and some we've, you know, completely... Kind of. Kind of, they've gone. They're not and that's perhaps good. Because the earlier strategy, the strategy in the previous government was to consolidate. Have a few large schemes based on rights where you couldn't get away from them after that. I Thousands of crores. No, right. but I think one other thing there's a difference in the approach. That's the point I I'm one making. One other thing that we missed was, and it was mentioned again, in, but it's an earlier one, is one house for everybody. It's a huge, no. huge thing. Housing I mean, these are the things that change politically are just... And when we went around, uh, gas cylinders, latrines, really won the women vote over. 
No, so, so I'm not saying that uh, I, 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 I'm not saying that they're not doing welfare. All I'm saying is that at this point they are no now way. saying this is the strategy we have put in place. Right. And she did very clearly make announcements that uh, link to uh, you know completing these targets. And they're saying we are going to now meet these targets. And I think that that actually is a perfectly sensible thing to do. Okay. If that is your welfare plan, Pranoy. Also because you mentioned Ayushman Bharat, I think there's one thing that the common narrative misses out. You know, it's, it's not a budgetary constraint that Ayushman Bharat is struggling with mm. right now. It has done phenomenally well if you just look at the number of claims that have been filed given the coverage right. of the program. The problem there, that which is a second order problem, and, I, and I'm glad that it's not a financing, but much more a linking. You know, it's a financial instrument. It's as good or bad or worthless as the health care that it can buy. Now, across the country, Ayushman Bharat has very different kinds of infrastructure that supports it. Right. So in many of your southern western parts, you have uh, fairly good and cheap relatively public care existing, existing, the right? State government so it's much more care. sustainable as an insurance program, yeah. while in most of the eastern part where it's mostly private care supported uh, and, you know, delivery, right. there the cost escalation is a very serious concern. And the worry in, I hate to say it, in North India is uh, fiddling, mm -hmm. that you're going to get, you don't even have a operation and you and the doctor say you've had this surgery or you've had some uh, treatment and you get insurance for it but you never had it in the first place it's a very we've had a whole uh, debate with the person in Niti Ayog that's in charge of this who's doing a good job but facing dishonesty problems with insurance but I wanted to ask you Nainan uh, one of the things that when we went around the various states was Telangana now their KCR I look at this budget and I look at uh, many of the things almost replicated. He said, do not vote for me again unless you have a tap in your house. He did stuff for fishermen. He did things, he really segregated and actually promised and did individual sectors of his society. For shepherds, he gave 21 goats. For barbers, he renewed their saloons. <laughs> the old voter, he's won a landslide in the assembly election. <laughs> now, you may laugh, but these matter. Of course. Yeah, but we talk about fiscal deficit and... Sorry. <laughs> no, but fiscal de I think what they managed to do is so keep the fiscal deficit under control yeah, while I, I doing comment. these lots yeah. of... Yeah. Uh, you know, off budget no, I, I tell you, but one thing he did say, one thing that KCR did say, is, what is this fiscal de deficit? Look at what China's debt is. Look at what... America's China's debt is China was debt the lowest in the world by the way. Yes, lowest in the world till uh, 10 years ago. Anyway. Yeah. And now it's like. So he's wrong. No, no, no. no, no. no, no. <laughs> debt to well, GDP in China. China, but let me just no, no. tell you. He said, and I, I mean, so does Richard, that debt to GDP ratio in China is very out of control. Well, in no, India, it's not. That in the last 10 years, yes. nothing now, now. to do with welfare. No, no, no. It's pure pumping of uh, thing into the financial no, system. No, no. Whatever it is, whatever it is. Anyway. Yeah. So you call me with we'll Richard, I'll... Uh, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> anyway, so tell me, I just wanted to ask Nainan, is this the future now that we're going to have targeting and it's got both... And is it a bad thing? It may be for political reasons, but it does change people's lives. Shepherds get 21 goats suddenly. You know, Pranay, while you said it half-jokingly, mm -hmm. um, it is a truth that uh, what is development? Uh, is it the stuff that's discussed at... 30,000 feet hmm. or is it this kind of stuff at ground level meaning is development what people want and can benefit from and see and feel so if you were to say forget KCR in Telangana but Mr. Modi himself across the country uh, what work uh, he could go and tell them that we have the, the what Arvind Subhanim calls a public provision of private goods is the thing that they're focusing on and whether it's water now or health insurance or homes or rural roads or cooking gas these are things that make a difference to people's lives right, right. and that is development it is development but, but and when, when, when we at a, can I no and, 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 and when we at these 30,000 feet call them freebies mm. it's, a, it's, it's unfair because it does change lives yes. no no you can't get away from the need to be able to finance them yes 
I, I mean, you can't be irresponsible and say I will borrow. But it's a very derogatory term for, as you say, genuine development. Can I can I just make one no. quick small point? I think one important thing uh, to re uh, to remember is, you know, w the the pieces of welfare that have been put together over the last five uh, five years and the continuity that is being uh, expressed about it, around it. I mean, these are productivity enhancing, but these are broadly safety nets. There is also the big question of the springboards, what my colleague Partho calls the springboards, what is happening to that? So Ayushman Bharat was the beginning of a focus on, head, on health. The big missing link uh, consistently over these five years and again today is on education. And yes, yeah, there we're was coming some, to that. Yes, coming so, to so education. Think, but, but that is about the framework no, of I welfare. I think one of the issues that... Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, sorry, I have a different take on this. You're mm. not lying me to No, speak. no, we <laughs> don't take different takes here. This is only one point of view, so we have a different take. <laughs> I'm the boss. Turn his volume off. <laughs> no, we'll come what back about to the you. joy of argumentation? Oh, God. <laughs> That's another channel. <laughs> uh, let's move on to something completely so different. Very quickly. Oh, yeah, please. please. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just there is, uh, you know, we have this concept very uh, esoteric, right? Subsidiarity. When you're giving me a state example, that is the job of the state to deal with things on the ground, in the panchayat, on the district. Right. The whole point of an effective, you know, and I'm not speaking theoretically, mm -hmm. I'm talking about my 10 years of experience in planning commission. The complaint I you heard every year. You call planning commission yes, experience? Yes, it was abolished because there were 300 CSS schemes yes. and every single state complained about them. So, what is right. the new concept? Right. The new concept is central government should stick to central government stuff. Gas is under central government. Uh, insurance, financial yeah, sector. I, I think, I think yeah, so, that's a good point. So there but are even two more different levels. That, even more than that. Except the schemes have gone up to 500. Yeah. They've gone down to 95. I have a count of it. They have been reduced from, but 95 Never is too much. Never so given argue that it should about be nothing, matters be of zero. fact. <laughs> Never argue about matters of fact. No, 95 opinion. I'm talking about Niti. We have joined by Rajiv Kumar. Uh, thank uh, you very you. much. Uh, Rajika, I wish you were here. Because these people are just arguing with each other. We need a third umpire. Yes, I, I'm clearly, I'm clearly missing out on a lot of fun. I yeah. wish, I, I wish I was there. Yeah. Well, next time we will. Uh, we will I know how busy you were today. Uh, we just, we were going through ten points, and uh, we're just no, coming we are, on. To but I shall be there. Great. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, just coming on to point number seven. Uh, mm. uh, Let's just have a look at uh, what our point number seven is. It's something. It's about the cashless economy and the transparency agenda in this budget. Uh, Mukesh Bhutani, the two things that we want to check. One is cashless economy. How fast do we go? Because people keep saying that in Germany it's 50 percent, it's such a cash. Uh, but it seems that in India it is a good trust. But transparency, can it be? A bit big brotherish, and are there any signs of that? Well, transparency is a very uh, broad term. Uh, you know, how do you bring about transparency? So you can say that demonetization was a move towards transparency. Uh, IBC is a move towards transparency. But specifically, I see uh, several in uh, this budget. In this budget, as a part of the finance bill, uh, several changes. Uh, they may appear to be what we lawyers call it as repairs to the law, but they are actually not. Uh, let me give you two examples. So uh, it was widely speculated that we could see a re-emergence of banking tax, uh, transaction tax. It's actually not a tax. It's a withholding tax. It applies if a business institution withdraws over one crore. This from is that 2% TDS. That's right. Now, TDS, sorry, tax deduction. So it's not a tax. Businesses are free to withdraw cash. There is no limit on that. They can claim the entire tax as credit. But why is the government doing it? The government is doing it simply because now it will discourage businesses from withdrawing cash, going more digital on transactions. Also, if you look at which the... Which is a good thing, right? Which is a good thing. If you look at the nature of GST disputes, this whole debate about fake invoices, fake credits. These are all cash transactions between business entities. So now you have a mechanism which is not punitive in nature like the bank transaction tax, but equally right. the government will be able to now track this track, I just, track uh, cash. I just want to go back to Rajiv Kumar taking that point and uh, just 
going back a bit in our discussion just to get your point of view and as the third umpire uh, and I'll bring in uh, point number eight which is connected with earlier earlier we had said the economic survey talked about investment 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 was there a did this budget fulfill that one single aim and particularly uh, with farmers and the agrarian crisis did this budget link with the economic survey and will we see a change in the agrarian problem and investment no, uh, Pranoy, I think uh, this budget uh, has some very uh, substantial measures for attracting investment private investment uh, you know I think uh, you would never you would have never heard before that the railways will attract uh, private investment in yes. you know track uh, restructuring and manufacturing of you know of, uh, of uh, rolling stocks even in running of passenger and freight and passenger trains right you know and the fact that also for the first time the government is laying out a uh, rolling out is promising to roll out a package for attracting mega scale uh, manufacturing capacities in sunrise industries like storage batteries or photovoltaics or you know, or, or, or electronics, mobile manufacturing, etc. Uh, you've also seen um, uh, the uh, you know the, the private investors now you know uh, in the in the, uh, in the in the small and medium enterprises being given a higher level uh, for uh, you know for for being under the 25 percent right. uh, tax limit. Right. Uh, I, I'm now forgetting some of them, but there are many steps in this direction to attract the uh, you know private investment, and then plus of course. You have several measures for attracting the foreign direct investment. Right. But I, let me come back to you on the farmer distress. Yes. You know, the, 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 before the budget was announced, there was a committee being appointed of the chief ministers, whose convener is Devane Fadnavis, with the explicit mandate of said, recommending the structural reforms in agriculture uh, because India has achieved food uh, self-sufficiency, food security, and we want to take it in the direction of emerging as an agro-exporter. Agro so, you know, this committee is going to review the APMC Act, the Essential Commodities Act, and, 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 and also, uh, you know, the ENAM and the measures to, pr you know, promote ENAM. That's the committee to, to, which will, you know, give its recommendation in two months' time, and that will hopefully begin to transform the Indian agriculture. The one thing you guys may not have noticed is this mention about the zero budget natural farming uh, which the finance yes. minister talked about. I have been uh, following it very closely and you know this will bring down cost in agriculture to a third of what they are so that we could then begin to start exporting because at the moment they are simply you know un uncompetitive in our agricultural sector. Uh, right. And you know and let me just sort of point out to you again finally that there have been two committees, one for the oil and gas sector and the other for the minerals, mines and mineral sectors, which in the first one have already, their recommendations have been accepted by the cabinet, greatly liberalized the, the investment regime right, uh, for right. the gas and uh, natural uh, and the oil sector, as a result of which the recent auctions have, been, have gone off very well and the other sector, the mineral sector, would happen very soon. So there is a whole, there is a big trust on attracting private in that with these measures the private you know the investor sentiment the you know the so-called drying up spirits animal spirits would awaken again and we'll see uh, that trigger taking off right um, well, there are two points of view whether there's enough in it to bring back those animal spirits uh, we'll quickly go into the second last of our ten points and then I'll uh, ask nine a very tough question <laughs> okay, we, we discussed it to some extent, healthcare and education. It was a big, big, wonderful idea in the last budget, uh, 2017, and uh, healthcare and the insurance scheme, and it just uh, seems to have petered out. And education, some steps. But one of the big issues is making all these concepts, having great ideas, but implementation, implementation, implementation. And we found a lot of problems throughout 75 years of our uh, economy of implementation problems. And uh, we are seeing that with the insurance. As you said, there are a lot of details, but you know, it's just not happening. Do you find, do you think uh, education 
all the schemes for edu improving education are going to be implemented or are they a bit abstract? Um, what's the question? Nah. <laughs> Implementation. Uh, do you have That's faith? That's the subject. <laughs> no, no. The question is, is NBF, you know, or oh, I have to spell it out. The question is, will implementation happen? In education? In education, in healthcare? Um, I think it will happen more easily in healthcare than in education. Absolutely. Because uh, people um, will go anywhere and do anything to get the health care they need um, and so there is a felt need which uh, you know taken care of uh, if you provide the funding for it then hopefully hospitals will come up doctors nurses all the rest of the paraphernalia but they need funding whereas in education the paraphernalia exists but is not working so there is a new education policy that's been put out uh, I'm not sure that it deals with the fundamental issue of how do you make sure that teachers teach in government schools. Right. And so long as you don't deal with that, you're not going to get anywhere. Right. Can, this can the tough can question I, I wanted to ask, just one second, sorry, I'll just come to yours. The tough question I want to ask is, uh, ideologically, people say that this government is not very different, it doesn't believe really in privatization, it believes we can fix the public sector, are there any indications, I mean, in the disinvestment target, which is, what is it now? 105,000. 1.05 lakh crores. 1.05 lakh crores. Are they going to be just tinkering like one public sector taking over another or just uh, selling a few shares? Or are they changing their ideology to say, yes, we need the private sector to take, it, take over? That's a tough question. You know, um, this is easy to answer because if you look at the mess the private sector has created, um, you should ask which private sector <laughs> who created all the bad loans, who are all the guys going bankrupt, bad who are the are guys fleeing from the country. <laughs> you know, no, no, bad what, loans are phone calls. What, what, <laughs> yeah, so no, no, bad loans are, you can't blame on the private the sector, on a government. Who are running the NBFCs? I mean, you know, India's private sector has to ask itself some questions. So you are against private sector? <laughs> no, my question was, has there been an ideological shift? Maybe I should ask Rajiv Kumar also. Uh, the general feeling is this government doesn't believe in privatization. They feel, let's fix the public sector. Has there been a change in that in any way? Well, I'm sure for now there is. Otherwise, you would not have a statement in the speech saying that, you know, they, saying, saying that the government is prepared to bring the uh, government, you know, the public equity below 51 percent in, in cases where they deserve to be, uh, you know. And uh, I think uh, the target for one lakh uh, five thousand crores will be will be achieved, and there will be strategic disinvestments. Uh, Niti Aayog has been pushing for it, as you know. We yes. recommended about but Raji 50. Uh, you know, 50 uh, entities for this investment. This government does believe uh, in in getting rid of uh, units for greater efficiency and not just for resource mobilization. But not, but but TN has raised a very important question, which is that are there takers now for these entities in the private sector? Right. Now, Rajiv, can other, I just ask the, you? The, other, the alternative is to bring in foreign investors. Yeah. Right. Can I just ask you? Or would you say that for the first five years there was no indication that this government believes in the privatization because disinvestment or uh, whatever they, I mean, various uh, euphemism for privatization didn't really happen. So is that going to change? Let's put it as simple as that. Yeah, Pranay, Pranay, it will change. Let me give you a fact. Of the about 44 uh, entities that we recommended for disinvestment and closure, the cabinet approved 24 of them and no action was taken by the system. So the political risk had been taken, the political statement had been made. Why no action? The system failed to deliver. Uh, I, 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 you know, because th there, are, there are all the kinds of vested interests that there is, there are, which will, which, will, which will push you back, which will bring one reason or the other for not being able to do so. 
Right. But this time I think it's clear, I know there have been several discussions on this, that this will happen. Okay. And, uh, and as this will happen, you will see that the government will get, uh, you know, get, you know get, get out of sectors where it doesn't need to be. You were going to say something. Just will on, this happen? Yeah, I mean, so, so he's saying last time they recommended, they cleared it, but no action. That's the worry that could happen again. No, absolutely. And I mean, you know, it goes back to the question that you asked earlier on implementation, which is what I wanted to uh, comment on. I think that but is... she didn't even know it was a question. <laughs> 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 well, because it's a non... I mean, at some yeah. level it is, given the context of uh, uh, the capability and capacity of the Indian state, at some level it's almost a non-question. Uh, implementation is, mm -hmm. frankly, the, the implementation crisis is the reality in which the Indian state operates. First, he today. says it's a... I, what's the question? <laughs> The news says a non question. <laughs> I'm just saying it's sorry, a statement let's of go back facts. to the question on education. <laughs> no, yeah. and on education, before, just on, very on, quickly. Okay, on, before on anything, let's before get the tenth, last okay. ten point, and then because we are really running out of time, point number ten, which is what everybody was talking about uh, before this budget, will there make a difference to employment? Will we have more jobs now? Will mm -hmm. there be a intercept change or just this gradual slope or gradient? Am I not even going Sorry. to raise the issue of the higher taxes that you will now have to pay for income over 5 crores? Excuse me, so I am so not so even so. one-fifth that. <laughs> Unlike some people I know. <laughs> some Jobs. people I know I think who good. say they're retired and they will be paying how much? 7% extra now. <laughs> you calculated. <laughs> but this is an issue that's bothering people. That are we going back to a very high tax system? Yeah. Why does and it bother you? Is it a bit elite? I Not you personally. You, so I no, I no, no, no. Generally for the economy. You can't raise it. It's, you know, you can't raise be, your own issues. Be so serious for once in your you. life. Yeah. Be serious for once in your life. Tell me, why does it bother you as a, for the economy as well? You are inviting trouble in terms of uh, slow reduction in the willingness to pay tax, in evasion measures. Think of traders. Think of small businessmen. Think of the evasion already taking place in GST, which is rampant. Why are you pointing at him? He mentioned, the issue. Issue. He mentioned the issue. I mentioned about I GST evasion. evasion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, then you I don't know if he's a CA expert. I have to because look at the incentives. What are you incentivizing at 42% tax rate? Right, right. From income from going up from 10 lakh upwards, if you're over 5 crores. That's good. I don't have to speak about that, this <laughs> issue now. <laughs> right. Uh, I think this is okay. Just to a quick round, Dora. Employment. Just with everybody, did it, was the budget meet your expectations above? Was it an excellent, good, not so good budget? No, I was looking for just one thing yeah. employment. Right. And I could see nothing that clearly promotes employment. Let me just give you one little number that yes. Mr. Arvind Panagriya gave right. in the article in the Times of India that for $2.2 .2 million, Reliance Industries creates one job. Shlok exports the largest garment exporters, creates 252 jobs. Can't we do something, you know, instead of giving depreciation right. allowances to capital? When what, what we are actually is I a labor the, the, stock the economic society. survey does talk about size and Yes, the but big where change. is it? That's yeah. what I'm asking. That where is happen, it? Yeah. And it yeah, I mean, needs, no, no, it's not that difficult to happen. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they already give a subvention for per EPF person employed. And water. No, but you need to give much more. Labor laws, you change them in Rajasthan. Why can't you persuade your governments to change them elsewhere? Okay, let's move on. That's a very important point. I must say, looking at the trajectory of uh, this government, uh, incrementalism was only to be expected. Uh, but I was optimistic that given the mandate, uh, some attempt would be made at least to pay uh, heed to the structural constraints uh, faced in the economy and at least some like attempt one, to articulate that. One structural that. constraint. Well, they are, I mean, look at, just look at agriculture. You have MSP and uh, PNK Minimum Kisan, support price. Uh, so you have the minimum support price, which has its own problems. And and okay, you have a sort of so, so, you know, this is the opportunity to say, I'm just going to take the subsidy story and tackle it head on. Right. I mean, the real problem today is finance. So it was a step in the right direction, but then it needs to be followed up much more by many reforms during the year. But a step in the right direction. Uh, so, so in a way, this budget met your expectations a little above. On, I was surprised to actually see. So Did you have very low expectations? The, well, <laughs> with given the three, four weeks that the finance minister has had, it's, it's a tough, it's a uh, tough thing tough. to do.
so, uh, expectations or not? So part A, yes, more than expectation. Part B is already told why. I can give you the technical stuff, but I won't. Uh, <laughs> but you. the part A, I'll tell you the jobs and this thing. Uh, one, there, that four codes. Uh, so I expect that to happen within a year now. Which one? The four the labor, labor codes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 17 four or codes. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, secondly, the corporate tax re reduction from the survey, we know that they were talking about holistic and integrated. It's not large versus small, it's all together. And third, the, the emphasis on startups uh, and things. You know, you, again, yeah. uh, you can look at it incrementally and say, oh, will this produce 1,000 jobs tomorrow? That's not the issue. The whole entrepreneurship, okay. self-employment, you're changing the old paradigm of, right. uh, you know, using jadus and, and doing self-employment to a new uh, startup. Uh, met expectations, the budget? Yes, definitely. The, the part A, more than met. Part B. Now for Grumpy Nine and no budget has ever met his expectations. <laughs> <laughs> Better than I feared. <laughs> <laughs> Your expectations were so low. <laughs> but she could have done more. Okay. Yeah. That's, you know, that's like, yeah. I thought it was an excellent budget, uh, given the time, given the, the, the slowdown. Uh, but I think the jobs issue uh, that, that you mentioned is, is very critical. Sure. And that was disappointing. No, it wasn't. Because what they're telling you is that the action really lies in the states. Do you know that the unemployment rate is also called pass the buck. No, it's not. It's not at all because you have to realize a I'm lot of that growth at. and the the employment therefore, wealth creation and subsequently job creation will happen through the ease of doing business. I think it's a point you made earlier that it is a very important issue but don't expect too much from any budget. It's like a, a finance department in Absolute. a company. Absolutely. Well, I'm Metro not competent to speak on part A given the no, but people I'm surrounded Metro with. But I think part B certainly yes. One path taking uh, initiative which is the biggest is dealing with 3,50,000 crores of arrears on service tax and excise duty. The right. scheme that has been announced <coughs> is a fairly elaborate scheme. I anticipate that you'll have one third of the dispute settled in this and that's, that's possibly excellent. the reason okay, good why the government has projected And last word areas. with the third umpire, <laughs> Rajiv Kumar, met your expectations but now you'll say yes, Pakka. <laughs> <laughs> that means you have to say no because your expectations were so high. Pranay, Pranay, I, I, no, Pranay, I, I just wanted to point out to something that you guys might not have noticed right. that this budget has the, for the first time, an output outcome framework to evaluate all government schemes above 500 crores. And the next budget allocation to these schemes will be done on this evaluation, which is now in process uh, and being done by the Development Monitoring Evaluation Office of the Niti IO. Okay, we didn't this know that. Let's hope change. the data is correct. And for that. we will extend it to all the ministries. Right. Okay, that's yes, a good the data point. Is correct. Is being, we are going to be using third-party validators for oh, that. Oh, excellent, excellent. And I think this will this will be uh, this will be a, this will be a big change. Big. Uh, yeah. That will change a it's lot like of fiscal audit. Uh, accountability in the government. Right. Well, thank you all very much. It's like an audit. Have... It's like an audit, and the first time you will have a real outcome budget. Yeah. Okay, for the first time a real outcome budget. Thank you all very much. Um, not even you went to sleep. Nine and. Viewers, wake up. Something excellent is about to start. Stay with us. <laughs>